Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. Billions of your dollars going back to city improvements, but is that what you want? What you need to know ahead of early voting tomorrow. People living near the border voicing their frustrations over how things are being handled with undocumented migrants. Why things are intensifying as Title 42 is set to expire. And shots rang out overnight. Now one person is dead. We have reaction from a neighbor in that area. Before we get you to those stories, our big story we're keeping an eye on tonight is the weather. We are in for a rainy Monday to kick off the week, something we definitely need. Yeah, the storms could roll in sometime, sometime overnight. So to break down what we might need to expect, let's check in with meteorologist Katie Brink. Uh, thanks, guys. A little bit of a surprise here. I've got the appetizer to the main course as far as the rain goes. We've had some showers pop up just within the last hour or so across far western Bear County, really between 1604 and 410, also down as far south as Highway 90. So in the Alamo Ranch, SeaWorld area, even over to Leon Valley, Oakland Estates, we've got some downpours, not picking up even any lightning here, but some moderate to briefly heavy rainfall is possible, even up closer to UTSA in the rim, and some light showers continue north of 1604 around Stone Oak, north to Timberwood Park, um, and then even into a portion of uh, Mal County there. Showers also are a bit farther west from Natalia to Divine there on I-35 and as far west as Hondo. So again, this is kind of the appetizer to the main course of rain and storm chances that will kick in tomorrow. So as we continue through the night, rain chances sto uh, steadily increase by rush hour tomorrow morning. Some scattered showers and storms will be possible and we keep that rain chance around all day tomorrow. But a big key is that it's not going to rain constantly all day on Monday, but you should prepare for some periods of heavy rain and thunder. I'll walk you through future casts for your Monday, let you know how much rain your yard could get tomorrow. Coming up in the full forecast, that'll be along in just a bit. Guys. Katie, great to see some activity there on the radar tonight. It's a murder mystery that surrounds the death of a 22 year old man who was found dead this morning by a friend over on the east side. And now he's been identified as Castro Troy Barnett, according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. The night team's John Paul Barajas spoke to Barnett's neighbor after the gunfire uh, sent her and her family seeking cover. Found dead with multiple gunshot wounds and no description of a suspect or a motive for the killing. As San Antonio police worked a crime scene on Paso Hondo on the east side, that was the only information they could provide. Officers got the call just before 5 in the morning. They've since identified the victim as 22-year-old Castroy Keith Barnett. So yeah, it was very, very scary. I don't, I mean, I know I live in a rough neighborhood, but I never expected right next door to me. The woman who wished not to show her face explained she and her family were woken up by the gunfire. Four. Four gunshots, that's what I heard. Startled and in a panic, she ran to take cover in her kitchen. Her oldest son already there hunkering down. We just stayed down and kept low and just waited for the cops and stuff. And we just, my heart was racing and I have my son and my nephew here as well. The neighbor tells us she didn't know the victim well, but that he was always polite to her. He just seemed like a nice guy. I mean, wave high, go, come in and go and that's it, you know? He seemed like a good person, you know. I hate that what happened to him. It's, it's sad. It brings tears to my eyes because he was young. I know he had his girlfriend and a baby uh, that he, they just recently had. At least five other neighbors who didn't want to go on camera added they didn't know much about Barnett's death, but that shootings were common in the area. We plan on moving soon. I, I got to talk to my landlord to see how, how we can get out of here because it's literally not a good place where we're at. At last check, police have not given any reason or possible motive. As for the suspect, no, uh, no description has been given, nor has a person of interest been named at this time. John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. 16 people in the hospital after a crash on I-35 in Medina County. Deputies say that includes 15 undocumented immigrants and the one person who was driving them. The crash happened around 8 a.m. The Medina County Sheriff said a deputy was trying to pull over a pickup truck when one person ran out. They say the driver took off before losing control and rolling over several times. Two of those people were airlifted to a San Antonio hospital, while the other 14 were taken by ambulance. Deputies also found a weapon in the truck. The driver is facing several charges, which could be upgraded.
Meanwhile, a husband and wife rescued following a car crash on San Antonio's northeast side. This happened just before midnight on Judson Road near Creekway Street. Police say a pickup and a sedan collided there, sending the pickup on its side. Fire crews had to use the jaws of life to free the couple inside. They were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The driver of that sedan suffering only minor injuries. Officers calling this an accident and no one is expected to face any charges. Governor Greg Abbott is praying for a successful recovery of a Texas guardsman who disappeared three days ago in the Rio Grande River. Tonight we know he has been identified as 22 year old Army National Guard Specialist Bishop Evans that was tweeted out by Governor Greg Abbott earlier today. The governor also writing in his tweet that Evans is a hero for risking his life in service. Evans was assigned to Operation Lone Star. He disappeared after going into the river to try to save two migrants who appeared to be drowning. That's according to the Texas Military Department. Evans is a field artillery man from Arlington. He joined the National Guard back in May 2019. We'll keep you updated on the story as more news comes available on that. Well, Title 42 is set to expire in less than one month. The Biden administration announced it will end the directive on May 23rd, even though some leaders here in Texas oppose that move. Yeah, a GOP congressional delegation led by Congressman Tony Gonzalez will tour the border and meet with residents in Eagle Pass affected by the constant flow of undocumented immigrants crossing the border daily. Our Alicia Barrera spoke to a small business owner in Eagle Pass just feet from the Rio Grande, who's left wondering why his voice hasn't been included in the conversation. Listen to us, we're here, we're right here, literally. Eddie Sanchez is the owner of Kumo Fitness, a busy gym that sits about 100 yards from the Rio Grande. Literally, if you look back there, sometimes you see them walking by, you know what I mean? And sometimes they'll hide behind this building here, and it's kind of scary. You know, in all honesty, he says Operation Lone Star's shipment containers, Texas military and a border fence have not been successful in putting a stop to illegal crossings witnessed daily. It hasn't gotten to a point where you can say it's back to the old days where they used to send everybody back. And it must be because whoever's bringing them over already knows the routes. According to Customs Border Protection, encounters in the Del Rio sector, which include Eagle Pass, Numbers last month more than doubled those of March 2021. Between the Rio Grande and Eddie's gym just up the road here, there are trails like this one that have clearly been used by migrants, and you can find some of the articles that they've left behind. You have backpacks, toiletry items, shoes, clothes, and even in some cases, life vests for the kids. Sanchez says for seven years he's encountered undocumented immigrants at his business, and he wants things to change. But when asked if any elected official representing or visiting the border has ever reached out to him. No, I don't think that's fair at no. all. You know, because it's, it's affect their decisions up in the White House or whoever makes them. It's affecting me directly. And I don't think they're taking my, consider, my point of view into consideration. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Sanchez says he wants uh, congressional leaders to include him in their conversation and for all parties to work together to fix what he says is clearly a broken immigration system. There is still no change in the case of a Cameron County woman who is scheduled to be executed this Wednesday. Today in Brownsville, where the case originated, supporters hosted a prayer vigil in honor of Melissa Lucio. She's accused of killing her two year old, but Lucio insists the child fell down the stairs leading to her death. Supporters are pushing for Governor Abbott to issue a clemency order for Lucio. Tomorrow, the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles is expected to give a recommendation to the governor. Well, as Ukrainians marked Orthodox Easter amid the continued assault by Russian forces, President Zelensky reportedly met with U.S. Secretary of State Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin in Kyiv. That meeting, coming as the latest round of military aid from the U.S., is set to begin arriving in Ukraine. Here's ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi with the details. An advisor to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says the expected meeting between U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and Zelensky took place in Kyiv on Sunday. Blinken and Austin would be the highest ranking U.S. officials to visit Ukraine since the war began. 
The White House, State and Defense Departments have not commented on the meeting. I think that visit of uh, Blinken and uh, Austin is a really, really symbolical and uh, and powerful signal uh, to Russia that Ukraine will not be left alone uh, with, uh, with this war. The visit comes after President Joe Biden's announcement of a new $800 million military aid package for Ukraine. The first batch of weapons set to arrive as soon as today includes heavy artillery, plus military support vehicles, 144,000 artillery rounds and 121 tactical drones. Russia now refocusing on a 300-mile front in the eastern Donbass region and the south. Seizing that territory in the south is not the same as holding it. They're still in for a fight in the South. In addition to the lives lost since the invasion began, an economic advisor to Zelensky now says Ukraine's financial losses since the Russian invasion began have already amounted to about $1 trillion. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ukrainians marked Orthodox Easter in a war zone. <laughs> Mikolo is a soldier. He says he's using his helmet as an Easter basket because he doesn't need a helmet right now. And President Zelensky with an Easter message to his country from the thousand-year-old cathedral. <laughs> Asking God to save all Ukrainians. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Still ahead on the night beat, concerts are back, but at a high price. We break down the inflation this year compared to previous years. Plus, nearly a dozen wildfires are raging across the Southwest. What we know about the cause in each state, along with a look at the damage. Plus, billions of dollars could be going towards improvements all around San Antonio, but is it going to the places you want? We break it all down and tell you how you can let your voice be heard. Believe it or not, it's time to vote again. Early voting for the May 7th election starts tomorrow. Voters in Bear County will decide whether to lower some property tax bills, approve bonds, and elect municipal and school district officials. A lot to wrap your head around yeah. the night. Teams Lee Waldman has been doing so this evening. She's live, Lee. One of the big things voters were weighing in on is San Antonio's five-year, $1.2 billion bond program. Exactly. The massive bond is broken down into six propositions that you see on the screen here next to me. For the first time, this bond is including an affordable housing portion, $150 million dollars allocated for five projects. It's something city council representatives counted as a win when they voted to send the bond to voters in February. Housing is health, stability, safety, and overall a human right. The housing portion of the bond is broken down into five projects. It doesn't include individual projects. Instead, it's broader categories for using those dollars with a focus on helping lower income households. If this portion of the bond is approved by voters, $150 million will be slotted for affordable housing. The other propositions voters will sound off on are 58.4 million for libraries and cultural facilities, 78.3 million dollars for public safety facilities, 271.9 million dollars for parks and recreation, 169.9 million dollars for drainage and flood control, and 471.6 million dollars for streets, bridges, and sidewalks. The big takeaway for me uh, on this bond is that we are uh, advancing the very basics uh, of our community, you know, streets, sidewalks, drainage priorities uh, better than we have in any previous bond cycle. Overall, 183 projects are included in this bond. Aside from the bond, voters will have responsibility to elect municipal and school district officials. More than 60 candidates are included on the ballot. We have a Bear County sample ballot to view on ksat.com slash vote. Voters can also weigh in on two state constitutional amendments. Also on our website, we have resources for you to check on if you're registered to vote, where you can cast your vote early, voting by mail, and what to take with you as you head to the polls. Once again, early voting runs from tomorrow through May 3rd. Polling hours are from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. this week, 8 to 8 p.m. on Saturday, and noon to 6 p.m. on Sunday. The last day to apply for a mail-in ballot is April 26th. Mark your calendars. That is on Tuesday. Back to you. Lee Waldman with all the details you need to know about that election. Early voting starting tomorrow. Thank you, Lee. Live look outside tonight. We're expecting rain tomorrow. Katie said we could get some tonight. Yes, we got some isolated rain out there now. So a few lucky yards will get a little 
appetizer before the main show or the main course and that comes tomorrow. <laughs> so here's a look at your Monday forecast. We've got chances of rain throughout the day, but you need a little bit of context. It's not going to be pouring down rain and thundering all day long. Rather, we're looking at periods of heavy rain and some rumbles of thunder throughout the day. So once it starts raining at your house, it's not going to keep raining all day. And that's something we really want to reiterate for your Monday. So if you don't already have the KSAT Weather Authority app, there's a QR code on the right hand side of your screen. If you hold your phone up to that box, it will prompt you to download the KSAT Weather Authority app. This will be something really good to have with you tomorrow um, because we are anticipating chances of rain throughout the day on Monday, impacting your morning commute potentially and also the afternoon and evening commute. So make sure you have that app downloaded. You can not only take it out and check radar anytime, you'll also get severe weather alerts updates from the weather team throughout the day as showers and storms pace through on Monday. I mentioned we had a couple of showers uh, pop up. These are there's no severe weather out there right now. I want to reiterate that if you've heard a rumble of thunder, there are a couple of lightning strikes in a few of these downpours, but that's it. Mainly this is just a nice little taste of some rain that we'll see more of late late tonight and into the day tomorrow near John Jay High School Memorial High School. There's a nice little shower, some moderate rain there inside of Loop 410 out in Western Bear County. Also north of uh, 1604 here east of 281. Um, that's northeast of Hollywood Park. Some showers there are also some showers extending uh, up to the north there, excuse me, I've got juggling my two clickers like I sometimes have to do. We've also got some downpours that are kind of sprinkled south and west of San Antonio along I-35 there near Highway 90 south of Hondo. Um, and then even farther south and west toward places like Dilly, Catula, Carrizo Springs, Crystal City. This is a portion of our viewing area that really, really needs rain. So they're seeing a little precursor tonight and then more on the way tomorrow. That's the good news. Currently 81 and in Castroville 77 at the airport 76 in Canyon Lake. Look at temperatures across Texas. There's clearly something going on, right? And you need to excuse what's happening in Abilene. Uh, big error temperature error with the sensor there. It is not 112 degrees. That would really be something, uh, but it is in the 50s and 60s in that part of Texas. We've got some rain cooled air and a frontal boundary off to our northwest. This will be the trigger for storms to move through during the day on Monday. One area that we're going to be watching really closely overnight. Uh, meteorologist Mike Osterhage will be in extra early tomorrow. GMSA starts at 430 AM. He would be in way before that because we're concerned that these severe Severe storms out near Sonora could continue to cycle through and stay strong overnight. That activity could get to San Antonio by early tomorrow morning for the Monday morning commute. So that's something the weather team will be watching closely for you through the overnight hours. So keep that in mind. Those storms to the northwest, they could try to get to us by 6, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So that's why we have the mention of some storms around for the morning commute in your forecast. After any morning showers or storms, there could be a little lull mid to late morning, but we've got the actual front itself that will be moving through tomorrow. So by the afternoon, we're going to see more showers and storms pop up. Some of these storms could be on the strong uh, to severe side with the concerns being wind gusts and also some hail. But look at this. Once this starts to move through in the afternoon, it's expected to linger into the evening drive through 9 p.m. tomorrow and even some lingering rain overnight Monday. Our rain chances really don't start to back off out of the forecast until mid to late morning on Tuesday. So again, not a constant steady rain, but periods of heavy rain and thunder possible as we get into tomorrow and tomorrow night. So again, an isolated severe weather threat. This is the low end of the scale, but nonetheless, small number of storms could have some gusty winds and also some hail. The biggest story here is the beneficial rainfall, widespread rainfall totals through Tuesday when rain chances come to an end of a half inch to an inch of rain, but there will definitely be some isolated totals higher than that, especially west of I-35. And again, that's where we really need it most. As we get into Tuesday morning, rain chances start to wrap up. But with this rain and cloud cover, the next couple of days will also be treated to some cooler weather 
with highs in the 70s, guys. Lots of good things. Coming yeah, nothing that. like uh, we saw on the temperature there in Abilene on <laughs> our radar here at all. Thank goodness for that. Thanks, Katie. Uh -huh. We'll have a preview of Instant Replay with Greg Simmons right after this. Well, in case you missed it today, a wild finish in the NBA playoffs as Denver avoids the sweep against the Warriors. With more on what's on Instant Replay tonight, let's head over to our Greg Simmons. That made you very late earlier it today, did. didn't it? But it was worth the wait, right? It was. It was okay. fun to watch. The good, the bad, and the ugly of the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans this season. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Curry had an ocean. He's got Joker out here playing with his food on the blow by. Float game. Count it. And one. The Golden State Warriors came this close to sweeping the Nuggets out of the playoffs in the first round, only to see Denver hold them off in the elimination game. And earlier today, the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks now have the Bulls on the brink of being eliminated. All the highlights plus we will run down each playoff matchup. Tonight, Larry Ramirez joins me to present the good, the bad, and the ugly about the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans seasons and what their needs are and where they both stand in the upcoming NFL draft that opens this Thursday live right here on KSAT 12. Inside route. Card is flushed. Oh, he got it. He's too fast. Card is in the end zone. He can't deny him this time. And following their spring game this weekend, do we have a clearer picture on who will be the starting quarterback for the Texas Longhorns this coming season? The sports guys are back tonight. All that plus, SAFC is on a roll that includes a victory over New Mexico United on the road for the very first time. And which team is the biggest bust in the NBA playoffs so far tonight? You decide. Instant replay is live and is right after the night beat. I have one team in particular in mind. We'll have to stick around to find out who that is. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Greg. We'll see you again in a little bit. We'll see you as the night beat continues right after this. Welcome back. Nearly a dozen uncontained wildfires raging across the southwest tonight. It has caused several states to increase safety measures for people in the path of that destruction. Like in New Mexico, where the governor there is issuing a state of emergency for several counties. Here's ABC's Zareen Shaw with the details. New Mexico's governor declaring a state of emergency across several large counties. We need people to leave areas that have fire warnings. You need to leave. It's going to be a tough summer. Our risk season is incredibly and dangerously early. The Calf Canyon fire merging with the Hermit Peaks fire, burning more than 54,000 acres combined. We're basically focused on notifications of people out in front of this thing, communities, uh, you know, getting them ready to potentially evacuate, and that's pretty much the main operation. A drop in temperatures and wind speeds giving more favorable conditions to the firefighting effort. Also in New Mexico, over 48,000 acres burned in the Cook's Peak fire. Businesses are doing what they can to help those working on the front lines. We went ahead and made the decision to open and trying to help serve the firefighters and the first responders. In Flagstaff, Arizona, the tunnel fire has burned more than 21,000 acres in the past week. Some residents losing everything. To see like everything burned is just very traumatic. In Colorado, officials believe the Teller County fire started when a tree fell on a power line. We're not fighting a fire that's coming at anymore. We're fighting a fire that begins inside or in the interior area of a of a subdivision. Authorities expressing concern about the increase in fires. The Marshall Fire destroyed more than a thousand homes in Colorado late last year. They have gotten progressively bigger, progressively worse, progressively more in the, just in the last several years. So far this year, almost a million acres have burned in wildfires across the country, nearly twice as many as at the same point in 2021. Zorin Shah, ABC News. The FAA taking responsibility for Wednesday night's mishap that led to the, evacu the evacuation of the U.S. Capitol. The agency issuing an apology for not notifying the U.S. Capitol Police that the Army Golden Knights parachute team was planning to fly in for an event at Nationals Park. The flight triggered the Capitol Police to evacuate multiple buildings out of precaution. Turned out the team was celebrating Military Appreciation Night with a parachute demonstration. The FAA says it has taken immediate steps to fix the problem and avoid future confusion. Amazon workers rally to support a new union for a sorting facility in Staten Island uh, today. Some New York congressional representatives showing their support. 
Employees of the sorting facility will decide whether or not to vote to join the Amazon Labor Union, or ALU. That's the new name the, of the established union representing warehouse workers. Amazon has filed an appeal with the National Labor Relations Board accusing the agency of unfairly and inappropriately facilitating the union's win. A sheriff's deputy being hailed a hero says it was a team effort to get everyone out of an apartment fire in Orlando. The rescue included saving a baby from the third floor of the building. Chantel Navarro takes us through the body cam footage that captured it all. And there sleeping, we heard rustling outside. Families in this Oak Ridge neighborhood say they awoke to chaos Saturday morning after the building across from them went up in flames. How, how, how old's your baby? This is body cam video from an Orange County Sheriff's deputy who arrived at the scene around 4:10 a.m. Crews say 24 units were impacted by the fire, leaving eight people stuck inside. Started to look around, I, you could see families trapped on each floor, hanging off the balconies. But something in particular stuck out to me, and it was a kid screaming. That's when Deputy William Pazinski said he had to step in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm coming. Here you can see the deputy start to make his way up to the third floor. At that moment, I knew that I had to save the baby. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I had to figure it out. And so I started climbing the building. Can you reach down? And when he couldn't make it all the way up by himself, his partner helped him up. And I couldn't have done it without them. He finally gets a hold of the one-year-old. Wait, 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 wait. He slowly comes down. Grab his baby. And crews are able to rescue her grandmother and mom, then clear the rest of the building. Deputy Pazinski says it's one experience he won't soon forget. It was very rewarding. That was Chantal Navarro reporting. Nobody inside the building had any serious injuries, but one firefighter did break his kneecap. The Red Cross and the complex are now working to help those who were displaced. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Take a look now at international news. President Emmanuel Macron uh, won the French presidential election. He was able to secure more than 58% of the votes, according to results posted by the French Ministry of Interior. Macron won by a margin of approximately 17%. He will become only the fourth French president to be reelected since France's current constitution was adopted back in 1959. He's the first to do that in 20 years. The first all-time private mission to the International Space Station will begin its return trip to Earth tonight. The mission, which launched on April 8th, was scheduled for 10 days, but has dragged on a week longer because of weather delays. Dubbed AX-1, the private trip was booked by Texas startup Axiom Space, which offers flights to the ISS for anyone who can afford it. The four-person crew includes former NASA astronaut, an Israeli businessman, a Canadian investor, and an Ohio real estate state magnet. They are expected to board the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule around 10 tonight. The splashdown off the coast of Florida is scheduled about 2 p.m. tomorrow. Alrighty, a look outside with live cam. Uh, really not much to see here at first glance, but we do have a few showers out there that have moved in ahead of the much higher chance of rain that kicks in overnight and especially during the day on Monday. So let's take a quick look at live radar. There's no severe weather out there currently. So if you hear rain or hear a rumble of thunder, just know no severe weather. And I don't expect anything severe with this activity. It'll be late, late tonight and then tomorrow where we could have a small number of severe storms, but some very light rain extends up I-35, generally there west of New Braunfels. We've also got a nice downpour right over downtown San Antonio. Not seeing any lightning here, uh, but if you're just north of downtown around the Pearl Broadway area uh, and especially downtown, uh, there is a pocket of moderate to heavy rainfall there. Also, some moderate to heavy rain down near Palo Alto College, 35 and 1604 on the southwest side. And then these little downpours continue down the I-35 corridor all the way as far south as Dilly and Catula. We'll take another look at your forecast for tomorrow. Another look at potential rainfall totals coming up here in just a bit. Bonus rain, wetting our appetites for what's to come. Thank you, Katie. Three new movies opening in the theaters this weekend. Two were expected to do well, but one came out the surprising leader. We'll tell you which one right after this. And inflation taking the fun out of a lot of things. This time we're talking concerts. How much more you'll be paying to see your favorite artist or band on stage.
Inflation seems to be taking hold of almost every aspect of our daily lives, and now that includes our entertainment. Ticket prices for your favorite concerts and shows heading even higher. ABC's Deirdre Bolton looks at what's behind those price hikes and how you can score some deals. From Bieber to Bad Bunny to Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. My nine-year-old is now officially Hamilton obsessed. It's He's actually in the house watching it right now. Big entertainment events are back. It's hard as like a single parent to be able to take your kids, so it does price families out of certain things. It's not just the price of your food, gasoline, and rent going higher. It's also the cost of your live entertainment. I was willing to spend what I spent just because this means a lot to both of us to be able to see them. The concert and events industry is betting on fans' desire to get back to pre-pandemic fun. And events pricing shows an increase of 64% since 2019, with tickets averaging around $205. Some standouts for this year? Billie Eilish, up 68%. Tame Impala, up 41%. Elton John, up 27%. The Eagles, up 9%. They know their fans have been dying to see them again, so they're bringing a really, really great product to these live events and, and truly putting on a show. As for what this means for event goers? Be mentally and financially willing to pay for the tickets if that's something you really want to do. Just kind of know what you're looking to do, get your family and friends ready, and when you see a great deal, there's there's definitely deals to be had. That was Deirdre Bolton reporting. Over the last 12 months, the inflation has increased 8.5% according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor, with a 1.2% jump just last month. We'll be right back. Like you've been saying, there's a few things already happening, mm -hmm. rumbling out there, but much bigger things coming tomorrow that we desperately need. Yes, oh my gosh. Uh, I want to start with the numbers as far as rainfall goes. Since the start of the calendar year at the airport, we've gotten a little bit more than two and a half inches of rain. That puts us more than five inches below average for where we should be at this point in the year. And uh, that's a, you know, that tells the story. But I think what tells the story a little bit better is the widespread drought situation that we have on our hands. Widespread drought uh, generally along and west of 37, south of San Antonio, west of 35. Anywhere you see this bright red color and especially the dark red color, that's extreme or exceptional drought. Now, here's some good news with this rain coming in overnight tomorrow and through the first part of the day on Tuesday. Our highest rainfall totals are expected in the areas where drought is at its worst currently. Generally speaking, across the KSAT viewing area, half inch to an inch of rain is a good bet for most yards, but there will be some yards that could see between an inch and an inch and a half, and then even some isolated instances of more than two, three inches of rain um, as some heavy downpours and storms move through tomorrow and tomorrow night. So temperatures currently are in the mid to upper 70s, even 80 at Stinson, so it's warm, it's humid, and still a little bit windy. But like we've been talking about this hour, we do have have some uh, kind of appetizer type rain. No severe weather out there currently, but there is a broken line of some showers that extends essentially from the Kyle San Marcos area along I-35 down to west of New Braunfels through Bear County and then along I-35 south and west of San Antonio. This is just some light to moderate rainfall in most instances, but where you see the red, that's some heavy rain. It's going to be brief, but that is some heavier rain there that is just to the south and west of Kirby. All of this rain is moving pretty slowly off to the east. So even folks in East Bear County uh, could get in briefly on some of this rainfall uh, down south of Highway 90, 410 uh, there um, down in Southern Bear County near Palo Alto College, South Sand High School. Some more downpours there, one just off to the west of Mitchell Lake down near Somerset. A couple of showers there and the shower activity continues generally along the I-35 corridor as far south as places like Dilly and Catula. Catula picking up on a few lightning strikes there, but again, not expecting anything severe as far as gusty winds or hail with this activity. And you can kind of see here this what we're seeing tonight, this shower activity, is really just the precursor to what's happening farther west 
along the cold front. There's a lot more thunderstorm activity even up in North Texas along the front and also closer to places like Sonora and San Angelo. There's a cluster of severe storms here and we're going to be watching these through the overnight hours if they can keep together. They could potentially be wandering into the metro area closer to the pre dawn hours of tomorrow morning. So through 4 a.m. potentially working through parts of the hill country and maybe even affecting the San Antonio Bear County areas during rush hour Monday morning. So there is the potential for some scattered showers and storms to start the day on Monday, but we expect the highest coverage of rain in the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow because it's the front coming through that will really act as a trigger for a higher coverage of showers and storms through the afternoon through the evening commute after sunset tomorrow and even lingering rain into Monday night with rain chances not really wrapping up in a more definite way until mid to late morning on Tuesday. So again, rain chances are constant through your Monday, but please just keep in mind it's not going to be a constant rain all day long. There will be periods of rain and thunder, so we'll get some breaks here or there. And again, the highest coverage of rain is expected during the afternoon and evening hours. So if you didn't get this last half hour, you can put your smartphone up to this QR code and that'll prompt you to download the KSAT Weather Authority app free for Apple and Android devices. Make sure you allow notifications because as we get some storms going tomorrow, the weather team will be able able to stream live via the app and just let you know what's going on, especially if we have a one or two storms become severe at some point on Monday. But bottom line, guys, this is looking like the rain we've been hoping for for a while. Not only because of the drought, but get that oak out of here. Oh, yeah. Been waiting for a while. Let's make this happen. Thanks. We'll be right back. Unfortunately, I can't do that. You've left me no choice. Are you dying, Dad? Yes. Oh, my God. What? Creatively. Oh, come on. You no, know, physically, he is tremendous. I mean, he will probably outlive us all. Nicolas Cage, starring as Nicolas Cage in The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, debuted in fifth place with $7.2 million. Get your money! Get your money! Go! Robert Eggers' Viking epic The Northman conquered fourth place with $12 million, while Fantastic Beasts' The Secrets of Dumbledore fell from first to third on ticket sales of $14 million. I don't know how you got back, but you made a big mistake coming here. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 outran the competition to stay in second place with $15.2 million, bringing its three-week domestic box office total to just over $145 million. <laughs> Come on, you can't prove that. My baby! DreamWorks The Bad Guys bowed in first place. The animated animal adventure made off with $24 million in its debut. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Guess people were into the animated villains this weekend. <laughs> San Antonio FC's red hot following two big back to back wins. And the San Antonio gunslingers are back in business, but not in the USFL. With more on what's on instant replay tonight, let's head to Greg Simmons. My all time favorite times to be a sportscaster was a USFL <laughs> days. Wish I could bring that back. And big announcement made this week regarding the kickoff of the 2022 high school football season coming up tonight on a brand new edition of instant replay. <laughs> San Antonio FC is red hot coming off back to back wins Wednesday against Austin FC in their first ever meeting with the MLS team that propels them into the fourth round of the U.S. Open Cup. And then there's last night their first ever road win against New Mexico United. We'll show you how they did it. The San Antonio Gunslingers are back, but they're not in the USFL. This is a very special day for us here at KSAT 12. This is going to be the first annual KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022. A major announcement regarding the kickoff of the high school football season in 2022, something that has never been done in the Alamo City. And the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame has four new members thanks to induction ceremonies held last night. All that plus, the NBA playoffs are in full swing with some big surprises. And who will be the starting quarterback for the Texas Longhorns this coming season? The sports guys are back tonight with their opinions. Instant replay is live, and it is next. A triple header to kick off the high school football season. And a 12 and a half hour live broadcast. You better rest up. <laughs> yeah, get some sleep Friday night, right? <laughs> Only Thanks, you would Greg. take that on, Greg. <laughs> we'll be right back.
It's been a while since we've had time to say this. Finally tonight, something good. Love it. 60-year-old Patrick Alexander from Fresno is recovering after receiving a new lung. But what makes the story even more special is the fact that he's the 1,000th transplant patient at the San Francisco Hospital. Their transplant program began back in 1991. Alexander suffered from a scarred lung that made it difficult for oxygen to enter his bloodstream. But in about a year, Alexander is expected to be able to resume a very active life. We wish him well in his recovery. That is all of our time for all of us here at KSAT 12. Thanks so much for spending time with us tonight. And be sure to tune in to Good Morning San Antonio for all your latest overnight news. An all new instant replay starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of Instant Replay. As the Spurs watch the first round of the NBA playoffs unfold, their attention has turned towards the NBA Draft Lottery, which will take place on May the 17th, followed by the draft itself on June the 23rd. This year, the Spurs will have three picks in the first round, one in the top 10 at number 9 for now, one at number 20 via the Toronto Raptors, and the tie break, and from the Boston Celtics at number 25. Just be thankful they're not the Brooklyn Nets with Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and Ben Simmons, who are now just one loss away from being swept out of the postseason. <laughs> It's game day. The Golden State Warriors are looking for the sweep for the Nuggets live here on KSAT 12 this afternoon. Denver was playing for their playoff lives. Nuggets led by 17 until the fourth quarter. Steph Curry drives in the lane, gets the shot plus the foul, a three-point play to tie it at 119. Next time down the floor, Curry with a step back. Warriors go up by two. Curry had 33 points. Nuggets would tie the game at 121. Monte Morris breaks the tie with a driving floater after that basket. And Denver goes up by two with 30 seconds left. Then Nikola Jokic passes to Will Barton in the corner all alone for the three. That's dagger. Jokic had a game high 37. Denver avoids the sweep. They take it 126 to 121. The Phoenix Suns finish with the best record in the NBA, but they find themselves in a dogfight with eight seed at New Orleans since Devin Booker is still out with a hamstring strain. The Andre Ayton gets Phoenix off to a great start with his one-handed jam. He led the Suns with 14 points in the first half. Brandon Ingram counters with an elbow jumper, two of his 11 first quarter points. And the Pelicans lead 25-22 after one. In the second quarter, Larry Nance Jr. puts the Pelicans up by six with his dunk. But Phoenix takes a 51-49 lead into halftime thanks to a three from Jay Crowder. Pelicans currently lead right now 98-85 in the fourth quarter. So let's take a look at the standings right now in the playoff picture here. First of all, Phoenix and New Orleans. Now, Phoenix looking to go up three games to one. New Orleans looking to tie that. That game is still underway. Game five will be Tuesday at nine. Dallas and Utah, they are tied at two all. Game five will be tomorrow at 8.30 in the Western Conference. Golden State and Denver. Now, the Warriors still lead that series. Now, three games to one. Game five is Wednesday at nine. And here's the strange one here. Memphis and Minnesota deadlocked at 2 all game five Tuesday at 630. Bucks in Chicago taking on the Bulls. <laughs> Milwaukee outscored Chicago in every quarter. The Bucks were up by 15 and halftime, didn't let up. The Greek Freak scored a game high 32 points, grabbed 17 rebounds. Drew Holiday at a 26. Grayson Allen came off the bench for 27 points, including six three-pointers. Former Spur DeMar DeRozan was 8 of 20. He was 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. The Bulls only managed 17 bench points, and the Bucks won big, 119 and 95 over the Bulls. Now, later in the evening, Trey Young and the Hawks trying to even up their series with top seed at Miami. Atlanta takes control early on the home court. Young drains a triple from the wing to put the Hawks up 26-25 after one. But he would struggle finishing with just nine points. Meanwhile, Jimmy Butler dominated, scoring a game by 36 points, racking up 10 rebounds. Miami outscores Atlanta 30-15 to in the second quarter. They lead 55-41 at halftime. They keep win big. 110-86, to take a three-game-to-one series lead. So let's take a look at those series now in the Eastern Conference. There it is, three games to one. Miami over Atlanta, game five, Tuesday at six. Philadelphia and Toronto, this is interesting. Philadelphia had one chance to put them away. Didn't happen. Toronto will try and bounce back again. Game five tomorrow at 7 p.m. Elsewhere, how about that Milwaukee-Chicago series? Three, day, three games to one right now for Milwaukee. They can eliminate the uh, Bulls on Wednesday at uh, that time to be announced, following what happens with tonight's game between Phoenix and New Orleans. And Boston and Brooklyn, the Celtics lead that series three games to nothing. They can wrap it all up tomorrow at 6 o'clock. San Antonio FC is red hot right now. They're one of the top teams in the USL, second in the Western Conference with a 6-1-0 record. Last night, they defeated New Mexico United 1-0 for the first time ever on the road. Justin Dillon scored the game's only goal, which happened to be the team's first converted penalty kick of the season. And you really have to hand it to the SAFC defense and goalkeeper, Jordan Farr. He now has three straight clean sheets in the USL competition. If you're tracking, San Antonio has now won three games in eight days, and staying focused has been something the team has embraced 
faced as mentality monsters. What exactly is that? It's easy to say you're a mentality monster if you're playing once a week, but this is where you really show what you're made of. So I think we all took that and we're like, you know what, this is this is the grind game. This is where you need to get the points and show what you're really about. And I think as a team collectively, we just came out and proved that San Antonio is here to stay. I mean, we preach um, about being mentality monsters. You know, we have to be cohesive, ultra competitive and resilient every single game. And, and the guys do that. And I'm just so proud of them to have that mentality. All right, next up in the USL competition is Monterey Bay FC. That's Saturday at 7.30 at Toyota Field. Now let's take a look at the Austin FC battle each other here. First time ever. There was almost 3,000 more fans than previous SAFC home match in that game on Wednesday. San Antonio would win 2-1 in extra time after giving up a goal just after halftime. The victory definitely gives San Antonio bragging rights forever since SA got the win in their first ever meeting. While this win meant a lot to soccer fans in San Antonio, it went 2-1. It also meant a lot to the players who really feel that the Alamo City is their home, not just a team for what they suit up for. That makes Wednesday's win, 2-1 to one in extra time, even more special. You know, San Antonio is, you know, it's my favorite city in Texas, and I'm sure a lot of other guys will say the same thing. It's home, and, um, you know, it's. I, I think Austin and, and San Antonio will always have a rivalry just because of how close we are, um, but they're an MLS opponent too, so it adds a little bit to it. it you know, we, we want to win those games. We want to win every game, but especially against an MLS opponent that's right up the street, we, we want to prove that we can be at that level too. And guess what? San Antonio will get another chance at just that. SAFC will next face Houston Dynamo FC in Houston in the fourth round of the U.S. Open Cup. Four new members from the class of 2022 entered the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame on Saturday evening. Former WNBA San Antonio star, all-star, and NCAA champion Sophia Young Malcolm, 12-year NFL veteran Indy Kalu, Baylor University track All-American Natalie Nalipa, and all attended the induction ceremony at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center, while iconic high school football coach late George Pasterchik was represented by his son and daughter Steve Pasterchik and Georgia Bartlett. With an English degree from Rice, I don't have the words for this because I knew it was special. I knew it was going to be a big event, but now that I'm seeing the facility, seeing the people who came out and everything that was put into this event, this is San Antonio showing everyone how, how great we do things here in the city. Really excited for the people that he worked with and he worked for. Uh, all these young athletes who aren't very young anymore. <laughs> it, it's been fun just walking around here and, and catching up with some of the people that he was a true role model for. For me as well, UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer was also in attendance. He and NCAA champion Kiana Williams were both honored for their achievements representing the Alamo City last year. Did you know that San Antonio has an arena football team and then taken up an old popular name from San Antonio's past, the San Antonio Gunslingers? Last night was their season opener in the Freeman Coliseum where they lost 44-36. The Gunslingers play in the National Arena League led by head coach Fred Shaw who used to play for the San Antonio Talents. This is Gunslingers second season but their first playing in the Freeman Coliseum because last year arrangements changed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, we, it, was, it was supposed to be the Freeman, and then like at the very last second, they used it as the COVID center. So it was a lot of scrambling trying to find a place to play. We ended up playing at the Rose Palace. I mean, fun experience, you know, gunslingers playing in like a little horse barn or whatever. But it was it was cool, but I mean, being in the Freeman this year is uh, very exciting for sure. The Gunslingers will play again this coming Saturday at 7 p.m. at the Freeman. You can learn more about the team at SanAntonioGunslingers.com. Time now for tonight's instant replay poll question. Which team is the biggest bust in the NBA playoffs so far? Is it Brooklyn, Chicago, Denver, Memphis? Vote now. We'll have results at the end of the broadcast tonight. The NFL Draft will air live right here on KSAT 12 this week. But first, major news to announce. I just want you to understand how major of an event this is. I lived here my entire life, and I've never seen anything like this on a local level. KSAT 12 will air a triple header to start the high school football season in August. We're calling it the KSAT Pigskin Classic. It's time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's our NFL Draft Preview, breaking down the Cowboys and the Texans and their needs going into the draft. How many picks they have and the improvements they need going into next season. And who is making early impressions to be the Texas Longhorns' next starting quarterback? The sports guys decide as Instant Replay continues live next. <laughs>